Um, some people might be coming from work or from their from their garden, hopefully. Um, but we're just going to make a few announcements about upcoming opportunities with vines. Um, this coming Saturday on October 16th, we will be building our 21st community garden in the Triple Cities area. It's going to be on 310 Squires Avenue in Endicott. So for you Endicott folks, we are looking for more volunteers to help us on Saturday, October 16th uh, from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. So if you'd like to register, please join us at vinesgardens.org backslash events. I will be there. Thank you, I'll Cynthia. <laughs> And if people want to help with setting up the site, like actually learning how to map, take things from a map and actually mark it out on a physical site and scale it up, you can join us on Tuesday from three o'clock until six o'clock at the garden site at 310 Squires Avenue and learn how to use some of those skills. Probably get a garlic clove out of here. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna have a healthy one. I'm gonna get a little green. I'm just gonna I'm gonna rename you actually, Cynthia. Yeah. Looks like we've got Lori joining us. But I can't hear you. The audio is still connecting. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Hey, yep. Lori, how you doing? Um, okay. <laughs> Oh, it could be better, but yeah, I saw some text messages. Oh, <laughs> awesome text announcements. We'll talk when we're not recording. How about that? Right. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Wish I was there and not here. Well, we're glad that you're here with us in whatever form it may be. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you have any people joining you there? So surprisingly enough, we only had one person register to attend in person, which is really different from a lot of, our, usually there's like a good cohort of people that are eager to attend in person. So yeah. I don't know if it's just the timing, if it's a busy time of year for people, but we only have one know. person register and, you know, it's hard to say whether they will actually show up. <laughs> But the majority of people, we had 14 people sign up. Most of them are planning to attend either over Zoom or over Facebook Live. Okay. In fact, that may be our in-person person pulling up right now. So I'm just curious, folks in the audience, how while we're waiting for people to join, how many people here have actually planted garlic before? See, Lori's planted. Um, last year was the first year uh, that we had planted it, so. And where did you plant it, Adriana? Did you plant it at home or in a community garden? Uh, it was at home. I was surprised by how easy it was. Yeah, garlic's one of my favorite things to plant. It's a uh, seems super intimidating if you don't know anything about it, but it's really simple mm -hmm. and fun. The gateway gardening crop. Mm -hmm. It's a nice time of year to plant too. Mm -hmm. We got very lucky with the rain today. Okay, great. We've got two in-person well, people. Welcome. Yeah. 
Clinton <laughs> two for sure. Thank you. chair. Do you guys mind sharing a handout? No, no. You've got your proof of vaccination or mask. Thank you, folks. Yeah. Welcome. I remember you from one of the volunteer days. Yeah, we the... called you Conrad, but that was not your real name. Yeah, that's your real name. <laughs> yeah. Um, the... Colin, right? Yes, correct. The Ghanaian soup. Food. Yes. Yeah. And what's your name? I'm Connie. Connie, welcome. Would you guys mind signing in? <laughs> and we've actually got a bunch of people attending live online right now. Oh, so yes, it's a hybrid workshop. So if you want, you can actually sit either behind us and see the folks in the workshop, or you can sit in front of us and just face Cynthia and me Okay. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah. And you guys can help us with the actual printing. Sweet. And you guys can just sign in. And uh, it's five after. So out of respect to the folks who have been waiting, maybe it's uh, about time to get started. Yeah. Let them settle in a little bit and we can get going. Okay. No oh, interference. Vaughn's joining us from the Davis Community Garden. Welcome Vaughn from Davis Community Garden. Hey, how are you? Great, thank you. How are you? I'm all right. Just <laughs> can't hear you. Sorry, I had the I had the Facebook stream up as well, so I was hearing myself back in a thirty second delay or whatever. <laughs> yeah. We had a bunch of that ourselves a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear that people are very envious of your tomatoes. Oh. Garden. Oh, oh God, the, the, the tomatoes were a disaster this year. Really? They all got blighted, every single one of them. The uh, the peppers are still going. It, it, it's been a very weird. <laughs> a lot of rain this year. A lot of the blight. Pretty much everyone I talked to that grew tomatoes got some blight on their plants this year. Yeah, it was. It was kind of heartbreaking. I had like a wheelbarrow full of blighted tomatoes and it was sad. <laughs> well, folks, thanks so much for joining us. Do you feel ready to get started? I do. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Did everybody get a copy of the handout or do you want me to resend that to you? You should have received it either in your email or the reminder text, whichever one I sent to you. Otherwise, I'll put the link in the chat. <coughs> oh, Got the it. What is joining us? A lot of notes. Yeah, I know. It's not there where I thought it was. Okay. <laughs> One second, folks. Oh, I had it in another screen. I think you guys here have the one that still says 2020, but. Oh. <laughs> All right. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and share our screen. Hey, Cynthia, you ready to take it away? I'm ready. I'll do a quick introduction. My name's Cynthia. I work for Vines as the urban farm manager. Um, I'm sure many people here are familiar with Vines and what we do, maybe more familiar with our community gardens. Like Christina was saying, we are up to what, 21? We're so gonna be our uh, first garden on Saturday be, in Endicott. Yep. For anybody who's in the media, it'd be a great story to cover. Yes, <laughs> yep. What I do here, uh, I am at the Urban Farm. We are in downtown Binghamton, right off of Susquehanna Street. Uh, the Urban Farm has been here since 2011. It is in the flood prone area of Binghamton. Uh, we flooded in 2006 and in 2011. Uh, we, the people, there used to be houses here uh, and there was a FEMA buyout. So they bought the houses out, tore the houses down, and we brought in new topsoil, new compost and everything and started an urban farm here. Uh, most of what we grow on the urban farm goes to our farm share, which is a weekly box of vegetables. It's almost like a, a vegetable subscription box. Uh, we do about 60 shares here from the urban farm. We also sell to a few restaurants in Binghamton and we donate a lot of food as well. Uh, we also have a youth program here where we hire kids from the city of Binghamton in the spring, summer, and fall. It's six weeks each program. And we have them work here on the farm and at some of the community gardens. They also help with our build a garden program where we build beds in uh, people's yards. And they get to learn a lot of stuff and not just about agriculture, about life and everything. It's a really fun program. And that's basically vines in a in a nutshell. We have a few other programs, but those are our big mm -hmm. ones. Um, Green Thumb Workshops, of course, which is mm -hmm. what you guys are joining us for tonight. So we're going to talk about growing garlic. <coughs> so for the most part, I'm going to go. I'm going to follow the worksheet. I'll talk about a little bit about what garlic is. Uh, then we'll go into how to plant it, how to take care of it, and a little bit about how to harvest it when the time comes. We've got a little bulb of garlic here. Uh, garlic is it's technically a, a biennial plant. We usually harvest it every season, so you usually don't leave it in the ground for multiple seasons, but if you were to not harvest it, it would come back, which is nice. Um, we plant garlic like a, a lot of other bulbs in the fall. And usually in Binghamton, that's mid to late October. That's now. Uh, we plant garlic in the fall because you want to give garlic time for it to set its roots in the fall. Then it'll go dormant in the winter and then it'll start sprouting in the spring. Uh, garlic is like one of the first things that comes up in the spring. You'll see the little green shoots come up and probably around April, you'll start seeing it start to grow. And it's one of my favorite crops because it's nice to see those green shoots in the spring. Um, what else we're going to talk about? Uh, usually in around June in Binghamton, you'll start to see the garlic start to flower and it gets what we call a garlic scape. And like I said, that's the actual flower of the plant. And if you didn't break it off, it would get little uh, garlic bulbules. I don't know if I never say that word mm -hmm. right. Garlic bulbules, which is basically a garlic seed. Um, if you were to plant that, you would get a garlic plant, but it would be very small. It would take a few years to get to an actual garlic size. Uh, so what we usually plant is a garlic clove. Uh, when you harvest your garlic, which is usually, in Binghamton, it's usually mid to late July. It depends on the season. If you have a colder season, you usually harvest it a little bit later. A warmer season, you can harvest it a little bit early. Um, when you harvest it, you always save the biggest bulbs for your seed. Uh, the bigger the clove you plant, the bigger the garlic will be next year. Uh, let's see, 
here is, I don't know if you can see it very well on the camera, but you guys can see it pretty good. That is a full garlic plant that's been harvested and dried out. You can see it's got some leaf shoots off of here. And usually, you know, garlic is ready to harvest when the first couple of bottom leaves, usually the first two sets will start to dry and get brown and brown or yellow and lose their green color. And that's when you harvest it. And I guess we should talk more about planting it. That's why we're here. I think I covered most of that stuff. Like I said, this size garlic that I have here, it's actually one of the smaller ones that we have. A lot of the garlic that we save for seed is much bigger than this. It's nice big bulbs. And when you plant it, you take the individual cloves apart you don't, if you planted a whole bulb of garlic, it would grow, but you would end up getting a lot of very small garlics very close together. You want to have the space it needs to grow. So you only want to plant one individual clove. And when you plant garlic, you want to plant it with the pointy side up and the bottom part is called the root scar. And that's where the roots were growing the last year. And that's where the roots will come out of this year. So when you plant it, you want to make sure you plant it with that root scar down so that it will root down from the bottom and the new shoots will come from the top. So I guess I didn't talk about the, the harvest. When you harvest garlic, you want to dry the garlic before storing it. Um, you can eat the garlic right away, but it's gonna have a much like spicier flavor uh, when you dry it, it cures it a little bit and uh, it changes like the sugar content and the garlic makes it a little bit sweeter, gives you that garlic flavor that you're probably more used to. Uh, when you're storing it, there's a lot of different ways people do it. Um, some people, if they have like a, just like a table in a shady area, they can just lay it out on the table for a while. Uh, a lot of people will tie the garlic into bundles and hang it from like rafters in their sheds. Basically, you want to have it in a cool, dry spot. Uh, this year, we hung it in our greenhouse, which was probably a little more heat and sun than it liked, but it did end up drying pretty well. And usually you wanna dry it for at least two weeks, but usually two to four weeks. The drier, the better, the better it'll store. Um, when you are storing your garlic, you wanna look out for any signs of disease in the garlic. Uh, that kind of garlic won't store very well. And if you end up planting garlic that has any sort of disease on it, you run the risk of just spreading that into your soil and you're most likely gonna transfer that into the garlic next year. Um, there is a little uh, image on here that shows an example of what a uh, infected garlic clove will look like. I've got one here. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on the camera in person, you can see it a lot better. But you can see it started, it had that uh, fungus on it up there, then it actually being in storage, it started to rot the garlic. So you always wanna, oh, I thought someone was asking a question, but um, if you do have any like funguses or stuff in your garlic, you can still eat it. If you don't wanna eat the actual part that's infected, you can just cut that part off, it's usually fine. Um, but those are the ones you wanna eat first, for sure. All right, and choosing a spot to plant garlic. Garlic likes full sun. You might be able to get away with a little bit of shade, but it's definitely a sun loving plant. You wanna have a nice sunny spot. You want a spot with good drainage. Um, garlic doesn't need a ton of water. And if you have a spot where you have really wet soil or you have water sitting, then you run the risk of the garlic actually rotting in the ground. And that is never fun when you go to harvest and you have a rotten head of garlic. <laughs> um, it's similar to onions where it does like water, but it doesn't like to be waterlogged or you, you get that rot. Um, whenever you're planting garlic, it's a little harder if you're planting in like a home garden or a small garlic bed. But you wanna try not to plant it in the same spot every year. Um, if you do that, runs the risk of increasing the chance of having disease in your garlic. Um, you're also gonna strip the soil of the nutrients that the garlic needs. If you plant the same thing over and over again, it's just gonna be taking those same nutrients out over and over again. So it's always good to rotate 
the spot you plant garlic in if you can. Uh, I usually don't wanna go back to the same spot for another three years. Like I said, it's a little harder with a small bed, but even if you could just move it over every now and then, every time you plant, then you should be good. It's okay if it's like the spot right next to it. It's not ideal, but you really don't wanna plant it in the same exact place every year. And garlic, when you're planting it, like I said, you're gonna plant the clove with the root scar down. And the rule of thumb for most planting, and it works for garlic, is you want to plant the clove twice as deep as the clove is wide. So this one's about two, almost three inches. So I'm gonna to wanna to plant this one four to six inches deep. And usually wanna space them out. I say like four to six inches, this is four to five. Um, the closer it gets together, the more crowded it's gonna be, the smaller your garlic bulbs will be and the more they'll be competing for nutrients within your soil. So I wanna go any um, uh, closer than four inches. And if you're planting a couple rows, you want them a good 10 to 12 inches apart. Uh, when we do our demonstration, you'll see I usually do three rows. Our beds are about three feet wide, so I can plant three rows of garlic in those beds, uh, four to six inches apart. And then after we plant them, we usually mulch them with straw. Uh, you wanna use straw, not hay. If you're gonna be using straw, make sure you don't use hay. Hay is um, usually more full of seeds and weeds than straw is. Has had the chance to, straw grows a lot longer. It's usually pretty clean of seeds. And you usually want that to be about four to six inches deep. Um, we usually don't go a full like six inches deep just for, so we're doing a lot of garlic. So it's to be a lot of straw and be very expensive to, but ideally you want a good like six inch layer of mulch on top of it. Uh, you can also use leaves as mulch. Some people will use wood chips, but I prefer straw or leaves. And I think that's the most of this spiel. I don't know if anyone has any questions. We've got some questions in the chat. Yes. The question is, are there any particularly good crops to rotate the garlic with? Uh, so garlic is an allium. It's in the allium family. So garlic, onions. So I think you don't want to usually do root crops right afterwards. Um, brassicas are really good to go in afterwards because uh, they, uh, garlic is a good uh, pest deterrent. A lot of pests don't like garlic. So planting brassicas afterwards, you might uh, find that you don't get as many pests. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the greens are good afterwards. I would probably avoid stuff like the tomatoes, peppers, and onions, unless you're adding a lot of compost into your soil, just because you want a good nutrient rich soil for most of those crops and garlic does take a lot of uh, nitrogen from your soil. So I would say go with like the brassicas, the greens, the, the crops that don't uh, need a huge amount of nit or nutrients and crops that you may have issues with pests with. Garlic is also a really good companion plant for those types of plants because most bugs don't find the smell and taste of garlic very appealing. So it can help keep those pests away from your other plants. I think in, I was watching last year's workshop and he was mentioning that grape growers will grow rows of garlic along with their grapes to help keep some of the pests away. Yeah. And around your fruit trees too. Yes, yep. Nebraska is like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower. Yep, they're all in the Nebraska family. And those are good to intercrop with it as well. Yes, I think. yep. Intercrop is like planting together. Yep. Mm -hmm. Especially like when you've got plants that are taking up kind of different spaces, oh, some growing okay. more vertically and then the roots growing around it and they can mm -hmm. provide services to each other without competing for sunlight and nutrients. Mm -hmm. okay. I also like beans with garlic too. Mm -hmm. Beans are usually a good crop to interrupt with anything because they're not a huge space taker. 
They like to be planted near things so they don't tip over and they're also a nitrogen fixer. So you can add nitrogen into your soil with one plant while the other plant is taking it out. And do you know, are there a few crops that aren't good to intercrop with garlic? I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. I think the only thing that you wanna look out for is like your nutrient usage. Like maybe if you have, I would say nutrient usage and space. So like I said, with like a tomato plant, your tomato plant's gonna be like really big and it might end up shading your garlic more than you want it to. You're also gonna be taking a lot of nitrogen from your soil with a tomato plant and a garlic plant right next to each other. But. So Lori's got a question. Um, somebody mentioned planting garlic near manure. Yeah. Do you recommend ameliorating the soil with manure or compost before planting garlic? And what do you do in a situation where you don't have a lot of space, let's say a community garden bed, and you can't rotate? Yeah. What recommendations can you make? So you definitely want to add compost and manure is good. Um, I know a lot of people will add, they'll plant and then they'll add, if you have access to raw manure, you can put raw manure on top after planting because over the winter that raw manure will break down and it'll uh, leach more into the soil. A lot of times over winter, your soil leaches some of the nutrients out. So mm -hmm. a really hot pile of compost is gonna break down slower than the compost that you add back in. But, and like you said, if you do have a small garden plot and you can't rotate your garlic all the time, adding a lot of compost and organic matter back into your soil every time you plant is definitely a good idea. Mm -hmm. And just to read it for safety reasons, if you're going to apply raw manure, please wait 120 yes. days at least before you try harvesting or working with the soil around that. Yep. Yeah. So that's about three months. Mm -hmm. That's why I like it with garlic because you're going to be waiting at least until the end of winter before you can do anything with it anyways. So you got a good six month gap for that uh, hot manure to break down. Cynthia, did you talk about garlic scapes? I think I miss garlic scapes. I think I was slowly mentioning it. Mm. Um, so the garlic scape, like I mentioned, that's the flower of the garlic. You can see where it was starting to come out of this garlic plant here, this long stalk. And a garlic scape is like the, the curly green part that comes out of the garlic. And usually when you're growing garlic, you want to snap those off. Um, right when they like start to curl around is usually when people will harvest their garlic scapes. Um, that will help the plant instead of focusing all its energy on the flower, it'll send its energy down to the bulb. So it usually helps you get a little bit of bigger bulb if you break off the scapes. Um, and garlic scapes are also very delicious. <laughs> and they're really nice in June, especially when you're stuck with a lot of greens and stuff and your garden hasn't quite gotten going yet. It's like a little different uh taste and it's got a garlic flavor to it it's a little bit more mild than the the bulb it's very good a lot of people make garlic scape pesto in june and like i said you'll probably harvest those mid june mid to late june delicious. let's see if there are any questions from facebook Usually, I don't see, I don't see any questions. Awesome. Any other questions from our live audience? Either people here in person or people yeah. online. If you don't have like the best soil in your backyard, um, like when I'm at college, it's just like a really big apartment area and they don't really want to like digging up the soil. Do you have any recommendations of like, garden beds you can get off amazon or like from walmart and like fill up with dirt and like do a raised bed kind of situation Does yeah absolutely raised beds are actually especially in a, like an urban area raised beds are kind of encouraged okay um one of the reasons i mentioned earlier that all of the soil that we use we had to bring in on our own mm -hmm. is because a lot of urban soil has lead contamination in it and so we usually encourage most people to either test their soil if they're going to grow in ground or build a raised bed. We also, um, you can get something called a grow bag if you don't have a lot of space, if you don't have space for like a full raised bed. 
Um, it's basically like a cloth bag that you just fill with dirt. You can get them in different sizes. So you can get like a smaller three gallon or like a seven gallon bag. Mm -hmm. And for garlic, you could probably grow maybe like two to three, maybe even four. If you really push it in a one grow bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just want to mention, we're actually launching for the first time this fall, a soil testing program. So if you go to vinesgardens.org backslash soil tests, um, we recognize that any households, any housing that was built before 1978 is unfortunately likely to have lead in the soil. And if you don't know the history of where your housing complex is built, let's say, mm -hmm. you don't actually know, you can't tell from looking at the soil with the naked eye, whether or not it's actually safe to be growing food in. So we are offering free soil tests that test for the things that gardeners want to know, like nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, and pH, but we'll also test for heavy metals like lead. And what many people don't realize is that even just handling the soil, um, but especially for, for young gardeners, um, can be harmful and can cause all kinds of health problems. So please visit mindsgardens.org backslash soil tests and fill out a form and we are prioritizing certain uh, neighborhoods or income levels first, but we just want to make sure that if you're gardening at home, you're gardening safely. Mm -hmm. If you get a result that you're not comfortable with, we do have pathways to have you either join a community garden or have a garden bed built in your backyard. Mm -hmm. yep. Also, if you're ever interested, raised beds are really very simple to build. And okay. yeah, very easy template. Hmm. Well, any other questions from the audience before we head hey guys, out? Guys, I, I, I have a question. Um, I'm currently looking to grow in a, in a vines bed and I checked with my coordinator and everything and we're good to overwinter. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm probably gonna try, um, I have some some pots as well. Is there any danger to trying to grow in a, um, a large uh, ceramic pot? I don't think so. Yeah, I think the only thing you wanna avoid are certain types of metal pots for the same reason that you don't want any heavy metals. I, I've heard people say, don't grow in like copper pots, but I think ceramics okay. Yeah, think about what the container was used for before you yeah. planted it. It might um, be good to like disinfect it and yeah. Don't use any paint cans mm -hmm. or, or, you know, gasoline cans. I mean, seriously, you think it's obvious, but it's really not. People think, oh, this looks so cute. It's vintage. <laughs> and they're not realizing that it actually held like leaded gasoline mm -hmm. or, or paint or some kind of paint thinner. So, you know. Yeah, these are... are typical terracotta kind of big terracotta pots. And I, I didn't know if it maybe would get too cold over the winter or anything like that, if that was a concern. You want it to get cold. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna add that, you know, my experience with the terracotta pots over wintering is that they do tend to break down and fall apart. So, you know, it may be something a little maybe a different type of pot, even a plastic pot might be a better idea. Just, um, yeah. Or yep. And one issue that I can see with that, wouldn't it be in the winter, it'd be more in the spring. So like a terracotta pot's gonna get a lot warmer when the sun comes out than the ground would. And that might encourage your garlic to sprout early. And then if you get another uh, more snow or heavy frost, if your garlic's already sprouted, your the frost or snow can potentially kill or damage your garlic plant. So that might just be something to pay attention to in the spring. If you see your garlic sprouted already and you know it's gonna get cold, you can always cover it or you know, maybe bring the pot inside or something like that. Put it in my kitchen, my big terracotta part. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you can't move it, I would just suggest covering it. But yeah, you don't want to keep it in your kitchen. You do want it to be outdoors. You want it to get cold. It does need, I, 
several, I want to say a couple of months at least of cold dormant period, or it will not develop the kind of roots that it needs. Mm -hmm. Cool, thanks, very helpful. So one other thing I did not mention, and it might not be as important because I'm assuming we're all zone five gardeners. There are different types of garlic that you can grow. Um, typically what we grow up here in the north is a hardneck type of garlic. There's many different varieties. I think I remember ours is our Carpathian garlic, um, but there's also a soft neck garlic that is grown more down south that doesn't need the overwintering period to grow. It's usually just, uh, I think planted, I think we plant in the spring with soft neck garlic. I think they just plant it in the spring, let it grow all season, harvest it typically, but that is, if you're looking to buy garlic and somebody asked you what type of garlic, you're, you're probably gonna look for a hard neck type up north. And a lot of people also ask where to get garlic seed. Um, around here, I think the, the best place that you could buy garlic from is from a farmer or a gardener who's been growing garlic up here. Um, that gives you the best chance because you know they're growing a type of garlic that has worked for them in this climate. So you could always go to a farmer's market, ask a farmer if they have any seed garlic. They do sometimes sell it at like home stores and stuff, but I think you're safer buying it locally. Um, you're less likely to run into a bad variety or, you know, uh, brought in diseases or something mm -hmm. from another farm. Yeah, like I've heard warnings from Lisa Bletnick, who is like the local garlic, you know, garlic master, if you will. She, um, she mentioned to be very careful of garlic that you get at the supermarket. You don't necessarily know where it's sourced from. And there are certain locations in Asia where they're using different pesticide practices that here, than here, and you do not want to be bringing those diseases or those contaminants into our soils here. Just like anything else, it's always best by local. Well, are we ready to head out into the field, Farmer Cynthia? I think we are. All right, I'm gonna connect to our other camera, one second. Here I am, I'll let, I'll let Christina into the waiting room. <laughs> We're going to switch microphones and the waiting room. <laughs> We're going to switch microphones and the waiting room. <laughs> and here we go. We're going to switch microphones. Uh -huh. And we're going to walk far away from here. Yes. So if you guys want to follow us, we can walk out in the field and we'll do some garlic planting and get a tour of the urban farm. You can see our greenhouse. Wait, our lovely yeah, squirrels eating our walnuts that... Okay. Yeah. I feel like I'm carrying your train. Because yeah. Have you guys been to the urban farm Can I ask before? All right. <laughs> You're working for us now. That's great. Great. I'm glad you guys got to join us. Thank you. The years. Um, you could see we started adding compost where we're going to plant. 
Uh, here we always add a pretty thick layer. We try to do at least two inches of compost so if we can get two inches of compost. And we have a little tiller that it's a very shallow tiller, so it'll just break up the very top layer of the dirt and mix that compost in with the dirt there. And I will show our first garlic demonstration. I'll get down here. Like I said, we can do about three rows per bed here. As I plant, I'll probably be pulling out weeds. The better for the garlic. So when I go to plant, I use a trowel and I'll dig a hole. I usually don't think too much about how deep I'm planting my garlic. I've planted garlic enough times that I kind of just have a feel for it. So I'll usually just generally dig a hole. And then once I take the clove out, then I'll be like, okay, this one needs to be a little deeper or this one needs to be a little bit more shallow. So, and how I always measure, I, I'm probably not exact, but my hand is usually about six inches. So if I'm going to dig another hole, I'll just go a good hand width apart. And that's how I know I'm, I'm anywhere from four to six inches. I know I've got enough space for it. So you take a garlic clove and you make sure you stick it root scar down. And this one's pretty big. So I'm gonna bury it about four inches deep, cigarette in there and get rid of the weeds and cover it right up. And that's it, <laughs> that's garlic. I'll put a couple of these in here. I'm very partial to using my hands for the most part. I like being able to make sure it's good and covered. And do one more row here. And then breaking up any like clumps I find in the soil, just loosen it up a little bit. Since garlic is a root and it is growing in the dirt, if you have really compact dirt, it might not have enough room to like expand, it might compress it a little bit. So what nice, good, loose, well-drained soil. And then once it's all planted, I've got straw here. Um, as for like where to get straw, you can get it from like Agway and stuff. Again, like ask a local farmer. They usually have either have straw of their own or a good place to buy it. And I'm gonna cover it up a good, a good thick layer of it. Usually if you can see the ground through it, it's not thick enough. And that'll help insulate it a little bit and it'll help keep the weeds at bay a little bit too. Yeah. You guys want to try? You get to be part of the <laughs> workshop. I do only have one trowel, but I'll let you guys start. So uh, the last place I planted was about here. So you want to do about a hand width. Yep. And you can plant one there. You don't worry about air pockets. Um, usually I just like pat the soil down a little bit. It usually works good enough. If there were air pockets in the soil, would that like the garlic affected it can affect more like the germination of it mm. a lot of times when they don't have like seed it's called seed to soil contact mm. and everything likes to be right in contact with the soil mm -hmm. so it might affect it the growing process i'm not sure do you think it would i feel like i hear more problems about not having enough air pockets yeah around like yeah even if there's lack of oxygen and there's anaerobic activity, you're going to run a higher risk of developing in fractals or other kinds of garlic diseases that you don't want. So I'd actually think uh, air pockets are, are not so bad, as long as they're not too big. Yeah. Like I was just saying, if it's too compressed, it really can't get enough space to grow. That's about, I asked that question, so like, well, if it's too compressed, I think like, what? Um, yeah. So. Yeah, you're better with looser soil than too compact soil. Perfect. So you'll come back in July next year. <laughs> yep. 
And you'll see the third row in is your garlic. There you go, that's one row. It's a good spacing. And a good thing to note too is you're better off spacing it too far apart than too close together. So if you're somebody like me who's not very good with spatial distances and can't ever, you know, if somebody told me walk six feet from here, I wouldn't know what they're talking about. So you're better off going too far apart than too close together. You're really not gonna hurt it being too far apart. The worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna lose a little bit of space. Keep but... your garlic social distance. Yes, <laughs> six inches at all times. <laughs> we do have lots of good, good weeds in here. That's another good reason to uh, make sure you're getting good straw. Uh, these beds that we're planting in were an experimental straw bale bed. And some of the straw that we got was not the best straw and it did have a lot of weed seeds in it. So we've had a lot of issues with fun weeds in this field, but that's a good reason for us to plant garlic here because we can pull weeds as we're planting, mulch it all. It's the crop that does really well with mulch and that'll help us uh, start combating some of the weeds in the field too. So how, how deep do the roots typically go? Uh, they're not super deep. I want to say they're probably about like a four to six inches past okay. the bulb of the garlic. Okay. If you've ever harvested, you'll see it's the roots are typically about four okay. inches long. We've got a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She wants to learn how to plant garlic too. Sure. All right, so, and then in terms of watering, Cynthia, is there any kind of special watering anybody does for garlic or is it generally just uh, rainwater? If it's a super dry season, so when you're planting the garlic, you don't have to worry about watering it at all. You won't have to water it probably until this late spring or early summer. Um, this year, we didn't really water garlic at all. We never really had to. Um, if you're going to go, if you know it's been like a week with no rain whatsoever, you may want to water your garlic, but for the most part, you don't have to, it's not a plant that you have to worry about watering every single day. Yep. And we'll take some straw. Yeah, there's a bunch of straw for you. You can cover it up. Perfect. Do you ever worry about other creatures like coming by and like, picking it up like squirrels or raccoons? We've never had any issues with critters messing with garlic. Like I said, like it's in terms of like bugs and most like woodchucks and stuff, they don't like to eat garlic. Mm -hmm. So they usually stay pretty far away from okay. it. The only time I think I've ever had any animal mess with garlic was one time I just happened to have a bunch of crows that came and they pulled out the bulbs. They like saw me planting it and they thought it looked fun. So they came and <laughs> undid what I did. They're so curious. Yes, they're very curious <laughs> so animals. Smart. They didn't eat it or anything. They just pulled the bulbs out. And all I did was go back through and put them back in. And they <laughs> then they didn't mess with it again. I asked because during um, the pandemic, I like had an avocado that had kind of started to root a little bit like a pit. Mm -hmm. So I like stuck toothpicks in it and like propagated it inside. And it grew like a really nice like stem. And I was like, ah, sweet, I'm going to put it outside. And then a squirrel came by and yep. ate it. And I was <laughs> devastated. So yeah. Like, <laughs> That's one of the, the best parts about garlic is we're like the only thing that likes to eat it. So <laughs> you usually are pretty safe. Cool. Yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Members, do we have any other questions from the online audience? Oh. Yeah, okay, did you make it something right delicious now, to eat here? with the fresh garlic? I can't hear. may have to unplug the mic. Hang on, one more time. 
I was wondering, Christina, if you made us something delicious to eat with that fresh garlic. Well, uh, I think uh, Cynthia mentioned the garlic pesto and you can make a pesto with any kind of herb. So maybe three cloves of fresh garlic, some olive oil, and then your herb of choice. It could be parsley, basil, sage, any mix of those things, even carrot tops can make a somewhat mm -hmm. decent pesto. I personally like to make peanut butter tofu, which means I put in a couple cloves of garlic, some soy sauce, some you know honey or maple syrup or stevia syrup, and uh, blend it all together with some peanut butter. You can put that sauce on anything and it will be awesome. Hmm. One thing my, my mom always used to say is that if you eat a lot of garlic, you'll never get sick because mm -hmm. no one will want to kiss you. Yeah. <laughs> It keeps vampires away. Yes, that's another reason why we plant garlic in October. Yeah. And, and like Cynthia said, we usually plant later in October. The reason why we're doing this workshop now is so that way you have time to go and purchase your garlic and plan where you want to plant it. If you have any follow-up questions, you can always email Cynthia at vinesgardens.org or Christina at vinesgardens.org and I will forward it to Cynthia and our team of experts to help you find an answer. Excellent. So folks, thank you so much for joining us. We have one more workshop coming up this year. It's going to be our, um, <laughs> it's going to be our fruits and berries workshop on November 3rd from 5.30 to 7. Uh, we're going to have uh, Jadmila, uh, presenting with us about uh, growing fruits and berries. Um, so please join us. And again, plenty of volunteer opportunities these next few months. If you want to come and volunteer with building a garden in Endicott or uh, any of the prep leading up to that, please email volunteer at vinesgardens.org. Get involved. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>